Section 11 of My Very Own Fairy Stories The Molehill at Menemshia Creek Please do not step upon my hallway, Grandpa Mole cried. Hilda looked all about her to see who had spoken to her in such a squeaky voice and finally saw Grandpa sitting upon a tiny knoll. Grandpa Mole had one knee crossed over the other and was smoking a long pipe. He had blue spectacles upon his nose, too, and wore a funny old coat, all faded grey. "'Please excuse me,' Hilda said as she sat down close to Grandpa and smoothed her apron. "'I've heard my grandfather tell all about it,' Grandpa Mole said in a sleepy tone. "'He used to tell us how the old, old wise Mole changed everyone back to their own shapes again, with his magic buttons. Hilda could not imagine what Grandpa Mole was talking about, so she asked him all about it. That's so, Grandpa Mole exclaimed. How silly of me. I shall have to tell you. A long time ago, Grandpa Mole went on, all of the moles lived upon the top of that hill, high over Menemshia Creek, and they were happy and contented, for no one disturbed them, nor did they bother about troubling others. Until one day. This day all the moles were having a picnic, and the tiny boy moles were running races with the tiny girl moles, and the grandpa moles were telling tales of adventure to the lady moles, and the grandma moles were knitting and listening. And there they were when they first heard the sound. It went clump, chuck, clump, chuck, clump, chuck, faint at first, then growing louder until it sounded like thunder. What could it have been? Hilda wondered. That is just what all the moles asked each other, Grandpa Mole continued. But they soon discovered that it was something that would do them no good. Then, after Grandpa Mole had wiped his glasses and relighted his pipe, he said, It was a man. The first man that any of the moles had ever seen, for they had always lived upon the top of the hill at Menemshia Creek, and no one had ever disturbed them before. The tiny moles stopped playing, and the Grandpa Moles stopped telling their tales of adventure, and the granny moles stopped knitting, and all the moles watched the man as he climbed the hill at Menemshia Creek. And as he climbed the hill at Menemshia Creek, the moles saw that one of his feet made the noise clump, and the long stick he had in his hand made the noise chuck, as he struck it upon the ground to assist him in climbing the hill at Menemshia Creek. And before the moles knew what had happened, most of them were gathered up and tumbled into a large sack. Then the man swung the sack over his shoulder, and the moles that were left heard him go back down the hill at Menemshia Creek. Clump, chuck, clump, chuck, clump, chuck, until he passed out of hearing. Then the grandpa moles began calling to their granny moles, and the tiny moles began calling to their mama moles, and the daddy moles began calling to the tiny moles, and all discovered that the man had carried off most of the mole family. So one old grandpa mole, who was so old and wise, said, Perhaps he will bring our grannies and mamas and daddies back tomorrow. But the next day they heard the clump chuck noise again and the man came back up the hill at menemshia creek and filled his sack again with the moles and went down the hill again then there were only a few moles left upon the hill at menemshia creek and they were very sad he is a mean man the moles that were left said we have lived for ages upon the hill here at menemshia creek and we have never disturbed any one why should this man take away our dear children and mamas and daddies and grannies and grandpas? Why did the man take them away? Hilda asked. The moles were not disturbed again for five or six days, Grandpa Mole continued, as if he had not heard Hilda's question. And then the moles that were left heard the man again climbing the hill at Menemshia Creek. Clump, chuck, clump, chuck, clump, chuck. 
and as they looked, they saw that he was wearing a cloak made of the coats of the grannies and grandpas and mamas and daddies and the children moles. So one old grandpa mole, who was very old and very wise, went into his house and brought out his magic buttons and placed them all in a row. And the magic buttons moved into queer formations, and the old, old wise grandpa mole understood what the buttons meant. And he called to all the moles that were left upon the hill at Madame Cha Creek and placed them at work. So that when the men had reached the top of the hill at Madame Cha Creek, the moles had burrowed under the grass, and there was a deep hole with only a thin layer of grass over the top. And when the man with the moleskin cloak stepped upon the place, he fell into the hole and could not climb out. Then the old, old wise Grandpa Mole again placed his magic buttons in a row, and they moved about in strange formation, and the old, old wise Grandpa Mole knew what the buttons meant. So the old, old wise Grandpa Mole told all the moles that were left to gather hornbeam sticks and gather around the hole at the top of the hill at Menemshire Creek. And when they were all about the hole at the top of the hill at Menemshire Creek, the moles that were left rubbed the sticks of hornbeam together, and the dust from the hornbeam sticks fell upon the mole skin cloak. And the grandpa moles and the granny moles and the daddy moles and the mamma moles and all the children moles whose coats had been used by the man to make his cloak came to life again, and they ran over the wicked man's face and hands and bit his toes until he was very sorry that he had made a moleskin cloak, and he said that he would never, never do it again. So the old, old wise Grandpa Mole threw his magic buttons into the hole at the top of the hill at Menemshire Creek, and the moles who had been on the cloak climbed from the hole, and the wicked man climbed from the hole. And Grandpa Mole chuckled so much to himself, he shook his pipe from his mouth and his blue glasses slipped from his nose. And when the wicked man climbed from the hole at the top of the hill at Menemshire Creek, he went down the hill, clumpity, clumpity, clumpity. And his feet only hit the earth every twenty feet, he ran so fast. And all the moles shouted for him to run faster, but he was running faster than he had ever run before, so he could not take their advice. And then Grandpa Mole chuckled again so long and hard, he began coughing, and Hilda patted him upon the back to make him stop, and wiped his eyes with a handkerchief. And yes, sir, my dear, if you wish to see for yourself, Grandpa Mole said, you can see the wicked man's footprints still in the rock at the top of the hill at Menemshire Creek. End of section 11